So this is for integrated one. This is a semester two final review class, uh, sorry, homework number three, which is dealing with chapters five and six. So this section's on chapter five, which is on sequences. We want a recursive function for the following sequence. And in the sequence, we are adding four. So my D, my common difference is four. And this is arithmetic. Now for a recursive formula, um, we like to know what our start is. So our start is F of one. Okay, that's our first term and our first term is one. Um, I write F of X is equal to, um, I use the term before F of X, which is gonna be F of X minus one. And what we do to it is we add four. So let's take a look. Um, so looking at this, these ones would be like an explicit type of a situation. These would not be recursive, okay? Both of these are written in a recursive way. We just need to figure out which one we want. Now, both of them look very much the same. The difference is this one says F of one is one. This one says F of one is negative three. Now, if I minus four, I would have gotten my zero term and my zero term would have been negative three. So B is wrong because F of one is not negative three, F of zero is negative three. So our answer is going to be A. On the next one, we want an explicit equation, okay? And in this situation, we have 33, 11, 11 thirds. And now you can think of it as divide by three, but instead think of it as multiply by one third. So that means my R is one third. So this is gonna be geometric. Um, so we want explicit. So, if I was to start with my zero term, my zero term, I would have to go backwards because this 33 is really my first term. My zero term, I would multiply by three and get a 99. That would be my zero term. So I could start with my zero term, which is 99, times it by one third to the power X. And you see, we have two that have 99. One of them is multiplied by one third. One of them is times by three. We want to multiply by a one third. These other two equations would be recursive form format. Okay, on the next one, which explicit function best matches this recursive? So in this situation, my first term, my first term is negative four. Okay, that's my first term. We are adding by four. So this would be zero, um, four, eight, 12, and so on. Now we want our explicit function. So we want to find our zero, okay? So I know that my first term is negative four, but if I wanna go back and find my zero term, um, since I'm adding four, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna minus four. So that would be my zero. So I would have f of x is equal to my zero, which is negative eight. And then what am I doing? I'm adding four x times. And I don't see it in that format. All of these ones have the X first. So if I was to rewrite this, I can put my X first and then minus eight. So that is going to be D. On number four, for which sequence best matches the, and again, for this one, we want an explicit, um, but we, we want, this is explicit. We want to find the sequence, okay? That best matches this. So this is geometric. 
if I um, was to put a one in here, okay. Um, so a couple of ways you could do this. I could put one in here. So I'm gonna have three times negative two to the first. That is gonna be three times negative two, which is a negative six. So D is gonna be gone, B is gonna be gone. Then if I was to put in a negative, uh, a two in for this, three times negative two to the second, that's gonna be three times four, which is 12. So I started with a negative six. I'm times it by negative two, which is 12, times it by negative two, which is a negative 24, times it by negative two, which is a 48. And that is going to be C. On number 13, use the following information to answer questions five through eight. Actually, that's a typo here. So questions 13 to 15. So I have 1,600 lollipops. Each week I decide to give away half of the lollipops to my friends. Write a recursive equation that best describes the situation. So recursive, um, my f of zero, this is my zero, not my one. We're starting with that. So f of zero is equal to 1,600. f of x is gonna equal f of x minus one. And what I'm doing is I'm giving half away, but that means I also have half left. So I'm gonna times this by one half. Write an explicit equation that best describes the situation. So in this situation, um, f of x is going to be, I'm going to be starting with my 1,600. I am timesing it by one half to the power x again, because this is my zero. If I don't eat any of the lollipops, how many will I have at the end of six weeks? So we're going to put a six into this. So we basically want to find f of six. So 1,600 times one half to the power six. If we put that into our calculator, okay, 1,600 times one half to the power six, I end up with 25 lollipops. On number 16, how many dots will there be at four minutes? Okay, so we've got this situation here. So I have two at the beginning. So F of two is zero. This is gonna be F of one, which is one, two, three. So I'm adding three onto it, so five. I'm adding another three. So this is gonna be eight. And I'm adding another three. So this is gonna be 11. So if I want to find my fourth one, I'm going to add three more onto that. So that's going to give me 14. Um, write an equation recursive explicit. So recursive, I'm going to start with f of zero is two. And then I'm going to have f of x is equal to the term before that, which is f of x minus one. And then what am I doing? I am adding three, that's recursive. My explicit equation is gonna be f of x and I'm gonna start with my zero. My zero is two, so I'm gonna go two and I'm gonna be adding three x times. Um, on 18, so this is from chapter six. So the first one they want us to graph this. Um, so if I graph this one in purple, um, that four is my y-intercept, so I'm gonna start at four. My slope is a negative three. That's really a negative three over one, which means I'm gonna go down three and always go right, unless you're off the graph, right one. So I'm gonna go down one, two, three, right one. One, two, three, right one. One, two, three, right one. You wanna be accurate if you're trying to find a point of intersection. Okay, and then let me draw a line through this. Let me move my line. OK, 
Okay, so that is the first line. Uh, my second line, let me do that one in red. So for that one, I'm gonna start down at negative two. My slope is a three over one, which means I'm gonna go up three, right one. I always do my top number as up or down, depending if it's positive or negative, and then my bottom number always right. So one, two, three, up one. You see it lands right there. One, two, three, up one. And I can go backwards. One, two, three, one. And let me just draw my line in. Okay, and my point of intersection is gonna be right here, which is at one comma one. So that is our goal is to find the answer. Now for the next one, let's say I graph this one in blue. My y-intercept is gonna be two, and the x really is a one over one, which means I'm gonna go up one, right one. So I'm gonna go up one, right one, up one, right one. I'll just continue that pattern, draw my line. Okay, and then I'm gonna graph the other one. Let's say I graph the other one in pink. This is a um, vertical line at x equal negative three. So I'm gonna come here, let me get my line. Let me make it a little thicker. Um, so I'm gonna to go to negative three. And I'm gonna draw my line there. So for this one, we see that it crossed at this point right here, um, and that point is negative three, negative one, negative three, negative one. That is the point of intersection. Now, the rest of these we're going to solve by either equal values, substitution, or elimination. Now, since both of these equations are y equal, I'm going to take that, which is what the first y equals, and set it equal to that. So I am going to go 4x minus 9 is equal to x minus 3 and solve. When I solve something like this, I always like to um, do my x's first. So I'm going to minus x from both sides. I am going to get 3x minus 9 is equal to negative 3. I am going to add 9 to both sides. I get three X is equal to six. I divide by three and I get X is equal to two. Now I'm not done. I need to still find my Y. And I can substitute into either equation. I think the easier one might be the second one. So I am gonna go Y is equal to two minus three, which is a negative one. Okay, so I know my Y is equal to a negative one. We write our answer just like I did on the other problems as a point, x first, then y. So negative, sorry, to two comma negative one. On D, I'm gonna use substitution because I know that y is equal to a negative two. So I'm gonna put that in here. And actually I already know one of my answers, okay? I know y equals a negative two. So I found my y. So into the second equation, I'm gonna go 4x minus three times my y equals 18. And my y is a negative two. So I'm gonna have 4x plus six equals 18. I'm gonna minus six from both sides. I get 4x is equal to 12. I divide by four and I get x is equal to three. So my point of intersection is gonna be three comma negative two. On letter E, 
Um, I'm going to use substitution because I know y is equal to negative 5x minus 17. I'm going to put that in for that y. So I'm going to have negative 3x minus 3 times my y equals 3. And my y that I'm putting in is going to be this negative 5x minus 17. So negative 5x minus 17. Um, so I'm going to have a negative 3x. I'm going to distribute negative 3 times negative 5 is a positive 15x. Negative 3 times negative 17 is a positive 51 is equal to 3. When I have things on the same side of the equal that are like terms, I am going to clean that up. So negative 3x and 15x is going to be a 12x plus 51 equals 3. I am going to minus 51 from both sides, and I get 12x is equal to negative 48. So when I divide by 12, I'm going to get a negative 4. Now I need to find my y. The easier one to plug into is going to be this one right here. So I'm going to go y is equal to negative 5 times negative 4 minus 17. So 20 minus 17, I get y is 3. So my point of intersection is going to be negative 4 comma 3. Um, on letter F. Again, I'm going to use substitution. So I'm going to be substituting that in for Y. So I'm going to have negative 2X minus 3 times my Y equals negative 7. So I'm going to be putting in this 6x minus 11, 6x minus 11. I am going to distribute um, uh, and leave this negative 2x as is. So this negative 3 times a 6x is a negative 18x. Negative 3 times negative 11 is a positive 33 is equal to negative 7. So again, when I have like terms on the same side of the equal, I can combine them. So my negative 2x and a negative 18x is going to be a negative 20x plus 33 equals negative 7. I'm going to minus 33 from both sides. I get negative 20x is equal to negative 40. Divide by a negative 20, and I get x is equal to 2. I need to find my y. Again, either equation works, but the one I'm going to do is that one right there. So I'm going to go y is equal to 6 times 2 minus 11. So I get 12 minus 11. I get my y is 1. Again, write it as a point of intersection, 2 comma 11. Um, G. For this one, I'm going to use elimination. And when I'm looking at it, I'm trying to see if I can get my x's to cancel out when I add them. If not, I might have to multiply them by something. But a negative 4x and a 4x will. And then I have a negative 2y and an 8x. So I'm definitely going to use my x's to cancel. And in this case, I could actually just add these two equations together and my x's will cancel, I'll get a 6y is equal to a negative 36. When I divide by 6, I get a negative 6. Um, I can do it into either equation. I think I'll just do it into the one that has a positive x, doesn't really matter. So 4x plus 8 times negative 6 equals a negative 24. 4x minus 48 equals a negative 24. I'm going to add 48 to both sides, and I get 4x is equal to 24. So x is going to be 6. So my point of intersection is 6, 
negative six, always x comma y. Now, h is a similar situation where I'm gonna use elimination. Um, now, my x is in this case, I'd have to get like maybe a 24 in front of them, one positive, one negative. I could do that, but that might be more effort than I want. Um, I've got a positive y and a positive y. So I think I'm gonna do my y's. Now, I need one of them to be negative. So let's say I multiply the bottom equation by a negative one. So I'm gonna keep the top one as is. It's gonna stay eight X plus Y equals a negative 16. The second one's gonna become three X minus Y equals five. Okay, multiply everything in the second equation by a negative. I add them, I get 11 X. My Y's cancel is equal to negative 11. So when I divide, I get X is equal to one. Um, I can substitute into either equation. I think, I think maybe I'll actually do it into this one here. I'm gonna go negative three times a negative one plus Y equals negative five. So three plus Y equals a negative five. I'm gonna minus three from both sides and I get Y is equal to negative eight. So my answer is going to be negative one comma negative eight. On I, again, this one, I'm also going to use elimination. Um, for this one, I can either eliminate my X's by trying to make maybe the top one be a negative 10 X by times it by a negative two or I can eliminate my y's by times in the top one by a seven. Either way, um, either one will work. So let's say I decide to multiply the top one um, by a negative two to get rid of my x's. So that's gonna become a negative 10x minus two y equals a negative 18. Uh, I'm gonna keep this equation. So this is gonna be 10X minus seven Y equals a negative 18. I'm gonna add these two equations together. My X's cancel out. I get a negative nine Y and you wanna be careful. These don't cancel out because they're both negatives. This is actually gonna be a negative 36. So when I divide by negative nine, I get a four. I'm going to substitute that into either of these equations. Let's see. I think I'm going to do it into the 5x equation. So I'm going to go 5x plus 4 equals 9 minus 4 from both sides. I get 5x is equal to 5. So when I divide, I get x is equal to 1. And my point of intersection is 1 comma 4. And that's the end of this video.